Welcome to the start of the Lean Freelancer series on WP Tuts. The aim of this series of videos is to help you become a more financially buoyant freelance web designer. Now, if you're new around here, I show you how to get more from WordPress, as well as helping you get more from your freelance web design business. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing to be notified when new content is released. And while I'll generally reference WordPress when discussing building websites, landing pages, or sales funnels, you are obviously free to substitute any other technology, and most of the things we cover will hold true. What's more important in this series is the fundamental principles behind the topic itself. And what exactly do I mean when I refer to the term the lean freelancer? Well, simple, ensure that you not only start your freelance business with the mindset of keeping overheads to a bare minimum, but if you're already operating as a freelance web designer, looking at ways that you can take existing overheads and how they can be pruned to reduce your bottom line and ultimately make you more profitable long term. Why should and would you want to have this mindset? Surely, if business is good, it's fun to have as many options as possible, isn't it? Well, let me tell you my own story and my own experiences and why I entered the freelance market four years ago with the lean freelancer mentality at the forefront of my business plans. Let's turn the clock back to 2005 when I started my design business with my then business partner. We set things up on a shoestring after a pretty bad experience with the previous business we were involved in and it was definitely a case of or bust at the time. Now we'd lost a lot of money on that previous venture and the pot was looking pretty dry. So we pulled what we had left and it was enough money for two months of rent on a business premises and that was about all we had before failure set in. So we dropped that on the deposit and the first couple of months of rent, moving into the building, we furnished it with office furniture, we brought from home and opened the doors. And luckily we had the benefit of some part projects that would generate short term income as well as some basic monthly residual income from past client work. However, that simply wasn't gonna cut it long term. So this is where we went all in on getting our name out there and luckily that did work. We built a solid reputation and things were going well until 2008's recession hit. At first, things were okay, but that lasted only for about a year before we saw the full effects hit us. And without going into too much detail, we carried on until December 2016, when we finally decided to cancel the partnership and split the business. Now, this was the start of my freelance career and the point where all the soul searching, stress, worry of unknowns became a distinct reality. I took everything I'd learned over the last 11 years and went over everything I felt hadn't worked and began to address each one of them in the context of my new venture. I had to learn a lot of new skills, including accounts, chasing payments, annual accounts, returns, tax, uh, and many other things that I had absolutely no experience of. Now, to say I was bricking it would be an understatement. However, I was also super excited to be totally in control of both the business and everything that brought with it. Now, one thing I had learned was that keeping overheads to a bare minimum was vital to ensure that the new business venture had the best chance of success. Now, this entailed breaking down exactly what I needed to earn on an hourly, weekly, and monthly basis to break even and then generate a profit. Overheads had to be kept small. Now, I would absolutely 100% encourage you, no matter where you are in your freelance journey, to do the same. Break your costs right down to see what you have to spend just to keep the lights on and the doors open. Yes, it can be a scary thing, but it's so much better to have your eyes 100% open than burying your head in the sand and hoping you make enough money each week or month. Okay, so that's a little of my backstory. What did I do and how has that changed today, almost four years on? Well, let's talk about what a web design business needs and I'll address those points one at a time and outline my particular solutions. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at, business premises. This is generally an area that as a freelancer, you can avoid spending out on. Yes, dedicated business premises can be pretty cool, but the business world as we know it has changed over the last 10 years. You no longer need dedicated premises as you can easily visit potential or existing clients at their business location or somewhere convenient in between. But if you absolutely need a more business oriented meeting location, there are many business and innovation centers that will let you book and hire a room or conference suite on an hourly basis. Don't fall into that misconception that you won't be taken seriously if you don't have a design suite or dedicated office. If you're a larger business or agency, that may have some credibility, but as a freelancer, you simply don't need the expense. 
Now, I'd be lying if I said that prior to launching my freelance business that I didn't have those concerns of losing clients and maybe not getting new clients because of this very situation. But in my experience, it hasn't had any type of negative impact. Now, this one is super easy. If you're operating from your home office, either have a dedicated line installed, which I generally wouldn't recommend this route as it is often more expensive. Or my preferred option and the one I opted for was a simple IP phone. This means you get all the benefits of a landline, but you use your internet connection to handle the calls and you get a dedicated landline number. Now, I was lucky enough to be able to keep my previous business number, even though my home office is actually in a different town. However, even if you don't have an old number to port, you can easily pick a number and an area code with most IP lines. So I would generally avoid using a mobile number as your main or only form of contact as it sets a precedent that you're kind of happy for people to call you anytime outside of office hours. But if this is your only option, well, it will work okay in a pinch. Now there are so many options that are totally free if you need to do a remote face-to-face -face with a client, provide remote training, or any other reason to require video calls. You can go old school and use Skype, take advantage of Google Hangouts, or throw caution to the wind and use something like Zoom. But whatever you opt for, there are plenty of great options that don't require you to spend a single penny. Now, unless you're great with numbers and are happy to deal with all of your accounting needs, including tax returns, etc., I would highly recommend paying a professional to take care of this aspect of your business. However, I would also suggest negotiating with the accountant or accounting firm on the price they offer if you're willing to supply accounts in digital form with all of the relevant key information ready for them. I personally did this and I supply my accounts every year via the free Wave Accounting platform. Now, the reason I would suggest doing the accounts yourself is that you can see exactly where you are financially at any given time and you'll have a solid understanding of your bottom line. Again, don't bury your head in the sand. Take control of your finances so that you can make informed decisions on every aspect of your business. Yes, it may seem overwhelming and you may need to get some training on how to manage the basics, but with sites like Skillshare offering several months of free access to new accounts, you should find the basics out there without busting the bank whatsoever. Keeping track of your projects can be a little time consuming. But thankfully, there are plenty of options that help streamline the entire process. Probably my favorite tracking and ideas app is Notion. Now, this recently dropped the monthly charge for the base plan, and unless you need the extra features in the pro plans, it should let you do pretty much anything you need to do. It's a fabulously flexible database-driven tool that lets you structure your information in almost limitless fashion. I would definitely suggest taking a look at some of the great guides on YouTube to get an idea of what it has to offer. There are so many amazing and free design resources available on the internet, you should never really be limited. But navigating the sheer number of resources and different licenses can be a bit of a minefield. Personally, while I use many of the free resources from time to time, I do tend to fall back on Envato Elements for the majority of my paid gigs. I was lucky enough to get a good deal on the monthly subscription about 18 months ago, but prior to that, I was paying the full monthly subscription price. You can download assets without a license, let your clients see them in context, and if they're happy with the results, you can assign a license in seconds. It's also a great way to make some additional income on a project if the client needs stock images, icons, audio, etc. Now, I've chosen to go down that route mainly because it makes my life easier not having to deal with a bunch of different licenses for commercial, non-commercial, attribution, and those kinds of things. It also has a massive array of amazing design resources from royalty-free music, photos, icons and illustrations, video footage, and a lot more. So even if you don't use it from a website point of view, there are still great assets you could find incredibly useful. If you intend to manage your clients' websites and make some residual income at the same time, managed hosting is a great option. I would suggest looking at reseller hosting plans that allow for easy upgrading as your client base increases. If you want to learn more about residual income and the ways to make more money as a freelancer, then check out the videos on the link in the corner and in the description below. If you only have a handful of clients to start with, go for a small plan that gives you enough resources to be flexible, but don't oversell your service. If you get a couple of clients who have a busy month or two, this can cause a real headache and damage your reputation if you can't cope with the traffic and their site goes offline when they most need it. I certainly suggest taking a look at a platform like Cloudways if you're happy to learn the basics of managing a cloud-based hosting platform. 
Now I've got a few videos on how to work with Cloudways and they should give you a good idea of whether this is the type of service that's right for your business. There is a link in the description if you want to check them out and take the service for a spin, absolutely free of charge for a couple of days before you make any kind of commitment. If you're building simple static websites, landing pages or sales funnels, you may not have a need for a full blown hosting. If this is the case, you could look into Brizzy Cloud. At $99 per year for unlimited client hosting options, built in page builder and options to remote host any site you build, it could be a great solution for you and it doesn't carry a massive price tag. Now, the latest update to Brizzy Pro and Brizzy Cloud make this an absolutely compelling option in my opinion and one worth checking out in a lot more detail. If there's one area that requires some special attention when you're looking after clients websites is your website maintenance setup. But what exactly do I mean? Well simply put if you're structuring your web design operations around a tool like WordPress you'll know that there are almost daily updates to WordPress core, the theme you're using and the plugins you may have installed. Now, these regular updates are incredibly important to the smooth running and the security of your clients' websites and obviously your business. Before making an update, you want to ensure you have a backup in place. Maybe a staging site is the way you prefer to test updates before rolling out to the live site. Now, whatever method you prefer, you certainly won't want to have to manage all of this manually. This is why having a well thought out and easy to use process for handling all of this can make your life way, way easier. I've already created a dedicated video on my setup and for the most part you can either get away with combining several free tools to get you started or if you need the full versions you can look at an initial investment into lifetime deals to avoid incurring ongoing monthly costs. However you go about working make sure you have a process in place that works for you, reduces the stress and just makes sense. If you'd like to see what I currently use, you can check out the video in the corner now. I'll also drop a link in the description for you to take a look at once you finish this video. If you're enjoying this content and getting value from it, why not consider hitting that subscribe button and smashing the thumbs up button at the same time. It really does help me and the channel out. I'm pretty sure I don't need to tell you about the need for tools like word processors, spreadsheets, etc. And you could use Microsoft Office, but let's be honest, the logical free option would be Google Docs. This can prove useful as you have access to all your docs on your computer, your tablet, your phone from pretty much anywhere and the free option has plenty of storage space and tools available to you. It's also a good option if you want to do things like keep track of client agreements, design approvals, etc. While you could easily use something like Google Docs or Word to create and manage proposals, there is a real benefit to using a service like Better Proposals. Personally, I was lucky enough to get a deal over on AppSumo a couple of years ago for better proposals and that removed the monthly fee I was paying for another tool called BidSketch. Now, while there is a cost involved in a tool like Better Proposals, it has several really useful features that I find invaluable. Proposal templates, shortcodes, template libraries, etc. But the real game changer for me was the online tracking to see if a proposal had been opened, how long they'd spent on each section and some other stats along with the ability to manage digital signatures. This just means that you can easily create a template for your project agreement, get that digitally signed from anywhere in the world. For me, these features became a real time saver and worth the initial investment. Using cloud storage to share files between clients and yourself is something that once you start using it, you'll wonder how you cope before. Yes, you can send files via email, but that gets pretty old pretty quickly and file size limitations can quickly cause problems when you're working on multiple projects simultaneously. While there are lots of great options out there, suppliers like pCloud, iStrive, Dropbox or any of a hundred other options. I generally fall back to Dropbox for client file sharing as it's relatively easy for clients to set up and use. I've been around for a good many years and matured into an easy to use platform for those less tech savvy clients that we bought or have. The other useful benefit is that you can get an extra 500 megabytes of storage for recommending the service to others when they set up an account and install the app. Now this works with both the free accounts and the paid accounts and using this method you can get up to 16 gigabytes of storage without spending a single penny. Pretty sweet in my opinion. Okay, so now let's talk about design software. Most if not all of us think of the Adobe Creative Suite when it comes to design software. This is after all the industry standard for many use cases, but it doesn't need to be the only solution. You can get deals on the full plan from time to time, but you are still going to be tied in to a 12 month contract and that can mount up to several hundred dollars a year. 
Now, if your usage is pretty light, you could look at some of the great online only options like Pixlr or Photopea. But if you prefer your software to be loaded onto your computer and not reliant upon your internet connection, there are some amazing tools in the form of the Affinity Suite. With image editing, vector editing, and document creation tools covered, you have the main tools many will need for working with graphics and the occasional printed document. The fact that these tools are available for around 50 pounds or around $60 each means that you can grab what you need to get your work done and not be tied into a monthly subscription model. Now, while they're not totally up there with the Adobe equivalents in some cases, they cover everything most web designers should need and a lot more for a fraction of the ongoing costs of the Adobe tools. Now that I'm four years into my freelance journey, what are my thoughts on still maintaining a lean freelancer mindset? One massively important finding is that from month one, I had money in the business bank account, I paid myself every month, and my stress levels had dropped massively. Now, while my freelance career now encompasses more than just web design and hosting, it goes to prove the point that if you're in a position to be flexible, to be able to pivot and embrace new opportunities when they arise, you can 100% have a much better lifestyle than working 40 hours a week for someone else's business or throwing hundreds, if not thousands of dollars or pounds away on tools and services that are not moving your business forward while keeping your bank account and your pocket happy. Now, if you'd like to hear about my thoughts on things like multiple revenue streams, something I made an integral part of both my business and my mindset, let me know in the comments section below. And if enough people are interested, I'll create some content on that topic too. Now, many of the tools and services I've listed were part of my initial freelance business model, and those that weren't simply were not available at the start, but have since become staples in my day-to-day -day business activity. Yes, there are lots of other little things, but this is the core of my business and my lean freelancer mentality. They keep my running costs down so I can be flexible, fast reacting to a given situation, and as profitable as possible. Hopefully, this has given you some inspiration and an insight into how you too can operate with a lean freelancer mentality and maximize your own profit margins. If you haven't started freelancing, I hope this has given you an idea of how you can use these tools or principles covered in this video to give your fledgling business the best chance of success as you take your first steps. Now, as always, I would love to know about your journey. Feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below. If you have any tools that help streamline your freelance business, let me know about those too. As always, all of the applicable links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description below. My name is been Paul C, this has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. As always, all of the applicable links to everything mentioned in this video are in the description below. My name is been Paul C, this has been WT. WT, I can't even say that. That's all, folks.